Hey, this is Carol Harnett with another One Take Work Love Play Daily Video Blog. And I'm calling this one, What Did You Do For Your Employees When The Lights Went Out? I live and work in Connecticut and I need to say for FCC regulations that my editors from HR Executive Online and HR Executive asked me to write my column, which will be coming out next week, on what happened to me and many thousands of others in Connecticut after the freak snowstorm on Oct Saturday, October 29th, where we got 16 inches of snow and because the leaves hadn't fallen yet, uh, essentially lost an enormous number of our trees and tree branches, which of course took the power out. I myself was out for eight days with electricity and 11 days without internet access, and that impacted me personally, but um, uh, on a personal living level, but it also impacted uh, my ability to do work and, and uh, was really challenging, particularly in the second week. So here's what I can tell you as one of the 100,000 people who was impacted in a town that had 100% of the power out, which meant, by the way, we couldn't get gas. In my case, I had no heat, I couldn't cook, I couldn't take, well, I could take a shower, but I'd freeze to death. Uh, my home got down to about 45 degrees, uh, at its, probably at its worst. Uh, fortunately for me, I was finally headed to a shelter and my friends in another town got power. Uh, so I actually had to move in with friends. And um, what I can tell you directly is that there were three major things that crush your mind. Um, how am I going to stay warm? Um, how am I going to take a shower? For me, that was number two. And the third was how am I going to eat? I had no ability to cook because I have electric cooking. Um, and I don't have any gas products other than gas heat. Um, so um, I couldn't, you know, I, I don't even have a propane um, barbecue. I have an electric barbecue, but that's changing. So that's something I learned. So those are the things that go through your head. And then um, as far as you yourself, and then it immediately extends to your family and to your friends. It was a really interesting experience that I was as worried about my friends as I was about my family. And what has been really interesting for me is I was asked to write this column and decided to reach out to a lot of employers I know here, either that are based here in Connecticut or are large multinational companies who have a presence in Connecticut, when I reached out to them, most of them just didn't know what to do. They, they had catastrophe plans in place, but they couldn't quite place that this was a catastrophe or not. Um, they, in many, many cases, didn't do anything particularly extraordinary. But the cases of success that I saw were, sorry, there's a car coming, I'm trying to, um, um, the cases of success that I saw were this. Employers, number one, who, 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 who got messages to their employees and said, do whatever you need to do. Um, if coming into work is going to help you, you know, take a shower, eat something, get more comfortable and able to work, that's great. But if that's unsafe, stay home. If you can work, do that. If you can't work, don't worry about it. Um, that's enormously comforting um, as to how to get that message out. I will challenge that how you get the message out was very challenged for us. I had no cell phone, no landline, no internet, um, no cell and no landline for several days. Occasionally, I'd have 3G on my iPhone, and so Facebook, for me, became the primary way I got any kind of news or information. Um, and so, um, if you have like a call-in number, that was really, really difficult for people in Connecticut, at least for the first several days. For some of us, as many as five to eight days, or with some people I'm even hearing longer. We're day 17, by the way, and, and the reason I'm here is, you know, my, the branches in front of my home have not even been carted away yet, and there are still people without power. So one is how you communicate and welcome people. Um, I heard many great stories about employers who either opened up their shower facilities, no matter how limited they were, um, or like worked with the local Ys to let people and, and health clubs to let people take showers there. That was enormously helpful for people. Um, they fed people because a lot of us couldn't get food or how to throw our food away, um, which was great. And uh, the smartest employers um, not only welcomes the employee to come and shower and come eat, um, but also welcome their family and most interestingly enough, their friends, which was really interesting to me. Um, so those are just some really quick highlights. I'm going to write more in the column. But I would say um, the big thing if you're an employer and your employees and the lights went out, number one is to, is in whatever and every mechanism that you communicated to tell them to do what's safe for them and what's good for them and their family and friends and then their companies. Um, two is to give them a place to get warm, give them a place to shower, 
um, give them a place to eat, let them bring their family and friends, critical. Um, and I'm mumming a lot, so <laughs> I'm going to end on that note because this is a one take work, love, play, video vlog. And I want to say that I hope you enjoyed some great work today or are enjoying some great work today, that you will enjoy some tremendous love and that you don't forget to play.